Hi, my name is uh, Christopher Barnack-Rolick and I'm from the uh, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in Karlsruhe, Germany. And um, I would like to talk a little bit um, on this materials view site and uh, video about our recent research in the area of uh, surface functionalization. And I'll come to the point why we're so much interested in surface functionalization in a minute, but I'll introduce you to some of the, of the key concepts in surface functionalization that we currently follow in our laboratories. One of the important things when you functionalize surfaces is to do this in a spatially um, defined fashion. So you don't want to functionalize all of the surface at once. You want to write or encode certain information in parts of the surface and leave other parts free or encode a different type of information onto that part of the surface. And we do this uh, with a lot of light triggered uh, chemistry, which we've been developing in the last, let's say, two to three years. And um, our light triggered chemistry that we develop will later on be applied or is currently being applied in the context of uh, biological systems. And that's why our chemistry has to be very, very mild and function at ambient temperature. And there can be no catalyst present, especially no heavy metal catalyst. And uh, the energy input that we place onto our reactions to trigger them has to be uh, particularly low. So uh, we want to work with wavelength preferably in the visible range and of, of very low energy. And uh, one of the reactions we've been looking at is the so-called photoenol process, where um, we have a molecule that, upon light irradiation, um, undergoes a transformation into a diene. And uh, this diene is relatively short-lived, but it's very, very reactive. So if you offer it uh, a certain dienophile, for example, a melamide, it'll immediately undergo a Diels-Alder reaction. So in effect, you have a phototriggered real Diels-Alder reaction. And uh, these Diels-Alder precursors, these photoenol molecules, you can tether to a lot of surfaces. The surfaces that we uh, wish to functionalize with this chemistry um, are, for example, as test surfaces, silicon wafers or glass slides. But later on, we want to functionalize or are currently functionalizing um, biomaterials such as cellulose. Um, however, also three-dimensional substrates. So with such a photo-trigger Diels-Alder reaction based on these photoenols, you can virtually coat any surface with these materials and then attach any dienophile onto the surface. Um, for example, a peptide, a polymer chain, even a protein is possible. So one of the chemistries is this photoenol chemistry. Another chemistry that we recently introduced is phototriggered oxime ligation. Oxime ligation has been well known in the field uh, for thermally, being thermally induced. So we thought, how about making a phototriggered variant of it where the aldehyde species is produced via uh, the phototriggered reaction. That means if you have a suitable precursor material, again, for example, a silanized precursor that you can then coat onto any surface, you can carry out a phototriggered oxime ligation to modify the surface in specific spots and encode in a spatially resolved fashion um, information on it. Oxime ligation, phototriggered oxime ligation, that is, is especially um, suitable if you are interested in low energy uh, phototriggered surface chemistry if you want relatively high wavelength and generally have very um, labile substrates. Another chemistry um, that we've been using is tetrazole-based chemistry. Tetrazoles um, react upon light irradiation uh, to give you a, a natural imine species, which again reacts with a range of different activated and non-activated double bonds. So also this technology gives you access to photopatterning your surface. Another example from light-triggered chemistry that we've recently developed is also um, getting in situ formed um, thioaldehydes from uh, phenacyl sulfide precursors. Also, this is a very, very mild technology, and these thioaldehydes, which get formed on the surface, react very, very efficiently uh, with a range of dienes in this case. You might ask why we actually develop all this light-triggered chemistry. Um, certainly not to modify test surfaces. No, this has a purpose. And the purpose for which we are doing this is we want to modify three-dimensional scaffolds. And these three-dimensional scaffolds, I'll tell you in a minute how they are produced, are modified 
with light triggered chemistry in specific positions with biomolecules, biomarker molecules that can be used to direct targeted cell attachment. I'll tell you a little bit about how we make these three-dimensional surfaces, and it's a collaboration with uh, Professor Martin Wegner from the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, and we use a process called direct laser writing, which is essentially a focused laser via two-photon process moving through a solution of monomer together with photoinitiator, and this monomer is trifunctional, and you can imagine if you pull such a laser beam through such a uh, photoresist, then polymerization occurs basically where the laser beam hits the polymerization mixture. And via such a technology, you can build up a lot of different three-dimensional structures, very simple ones or very complex ones. Imagine you write something that looks like a boxing ring. Everyone knows what a boxing ring looks like. And now you code this entire three-dimensional written surface with a photoreactive molecule. For example, the photoenol species I've introduced to you, or a tetrazole species, or an oxime species, or a precursor to a photoreactive oxime species, or um, a phenacyl sulfide, which also photoreacts. Then you subject the photocoated, photoreactive coated three-dimensional surface to a light stimulus in specific points, and then if this all happens in a solution where a biomarker with a respective counter functionality is present, you can encode biological information in specific points onto a three dimension, onto this three dimensional surface. Once you've done that, you can passivate the rest of the surface, for example, with uh, polyethylene glycol units so that no cells will attach there, but only at the very specific points where the biolab functionalization has actually taken place. And via such a procedure, coming back to the image of the boxing ring, imagine we had only functionalized the posts, the four posts of the boxing ring with a suitable biomarker, for example, cyclic RGD. Then you can imagine that probably a cell will only attach to the four corner posts of the box boxing ring and will be freely suspended in three-dimensional space. And our biology collaboration partners want to watch the behavior of a single cell in three-dimensional space, um, or want to see how cell behavior is influenced depending on the rigidity of the boxing ring of the material on which it sits. These experiments are carried out in the group of Professor Bart Martin Bastmeier, one of our collaboration partners. So you see a lot of different things come together here. We have the development of efficient, mild, catalyst-free photochemistries from our side. We have the direct laser writing expertise from the group of Martin Wegner. And we have later on the um, use of these functional, biomarker functional three-dimensional scaffolds in the group of Martin Bastmeier. Um, for targeted cell attachment studies. And we're sort of in the middle of it, providing the chemistry and providing this bridge between physics and biology.